So, yeah, I don't know how many of you have played around with Rhino at all, but basically here it is. Um, interface is pretty nice. I've brought in my views. Um, it's a quick sample one I did. Uh, so you got your side view and your front view and any other view that you really find important, but usually in most products there's like two main, one or two main views. Um, so yeah, I just kind of pulled these from the internet. It'd be better if, you know, you guys sketched your own because you have your own helmets to design. Can you uh, just, can you do a quick sort of like show of how, how you do a surface in Rhino, just normally? A surface? Yeah. If you like were a sweep? To do with just Rhino looks. Okay, well, if I was to do like a sweep, you'd, you'd pull up a, like your first curve, there's usually two curves, make one curve, and then you'd make another curve. I jump to the right view, pick that point. This is my path, like my rail, back to perspective. Oops, it's a little off. And I'll just try that again. Fuck. Uh, putting projection. So I'll just use that line as a rail and then do sweep, something like that. Sweep with one rail. Rail. Cross section. Uh, cross section curve, yeah. Let's try it again. Sweep the rail. It's that cross section. There you go. That's a sweep. So. This is very similar to SolidWorks tools, except that what Ben is making here is making a surface as opposed to solid. Yeah, I work entirely in surfaces, so like, like you know, zero thickness geometry, no like volumes. So in SolidWorks, you have like sweeps, lofts, boundaries, and stuff like that. T-spline is a little different. It's going to be, um, it's like I think it's called sub. Division modeling, so it's more common in stuff like 3ds Max or Cinema 4D, where you have like a polygon and then a smooth model, and you kind of work between the two. So you're kind of basically just sculpting simple boxes, and then it kind of automatically smooths it. So one like classic example is like the T splines cube. It's smooth, but it's really a box. So it's a box, then it jumps to, to there's two modes essentially. So there you have the control handle, which essentially manipulates the box, or the, the, the smooth, but essentially it is the box, if you can kind of imagine. So just like in like, I guess an example, like a 2D example would be an illustrator. If you have a spline or a, a bezier, you have your handles that kind of control that shape, that 2D arc, but that, but that shape is actually just a, 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 the handle itself makes a triangle. So if you can kind of, extrapolate that into 3D, you have these boxes and simple primitive shapes that are actually sculpting these very smooth and organic shapes that you're kind of playing with. So it's a kind of a different way to start your models. In SolidWorks, you traditionally, you know, you build your planes, you build your sketches, you build all your, like, datum geometry, and then you start building your models from that. This is, like, a lot quicker to get into surfaces and, like, smooth, like, highly reflective finishes, right? Um, yeah, so that's just like one primitive. There's, you know, like you can start, it's a good way to start is with just with primitives. Like if you're going to build shapes, like there's a sphere and then you can start manipulating them or you can start with, you know, they make just a bunch of different shapes. It's generally good to figure out how you can kind of block these out in, sh in shapes. And then it's about like kind of sculpting them into each other. So you might start with like a cylinder, two cylinders, and then Think about how you're going to blend those two into in together to create your surface, essentially. So those are kind of good. Is there anything else simple you need me to cover? No, uh, that's good. That's, uh, so whatever you need to cover. Okay, so if I was tackling a helmet, uh, the simplest way to start would probably should just be with a sphere. 
because it's basically a sphere in its simplest, most primitive form. So from the right view, I would just pull in the sphere, probably from around here. And the th also thing you got to keep in mind too is you're constantly massaging in T-splines, like what your model is. So like the, the concern with accuracy I have is very little. I'm more concerned about, you know, making this look right, styling, appearance. So, uh, and what you also kind, kind of do a lot is like deleting geometry. So if I start with this sphere head, I can delete the under portion of it. One of the key things about t spans is that you can select, there's three modes of selecting. For example, Ben is using selecting faces. But you can also do that with selecting the nodes. Yeah. So if you show the nodes. Down here, there's the node select, edge select. So that makes you select edges. Yeah. And you have these different types of manipulators. Uh, translate, rotate, scale. And then, I guess, all three. And then, yeah, the different kinds of selection. So you pick it. And then you can, you know, either translate or rotate or scale. Or I just use the gumball tool, which is the same thing on them. Um, so yeah, then there's face, and then there's the entire T-spline itself. And what I'm going to do off the bat is apply symmetry, because it's really handy for this. So you take the T-spline, you can add symmetry or discover it. In this case, symmetry is already sort of there. It's a symmetrical shape, so I can discover it. It's on the axis. Click the edge, now that green line is my symmetry plane. So everything I do on this side happens on that side. I'm going to move new layer. One of the things about Rhino is that if you're ever confused about how to use this stuff, that the command module kind of gives you like the next step to follow. So if you follow the command, if you don't know where to go next, just follow the command lines, and it gives you a hint of, uh, as to what you should be doing. Yeah. So now I'm, I've also put it on a different layer so I can lock the head so I don't interfere with it as much. And like that. So now I can just work in the T-spline and not really worry about this stuff. Um, so yeah, this is obviously not quite as refined yet. So I'm going to delete the side because these are a bunch of three-sided polygons and they're generally not so friendly to work with. You generally want four sides at all times. It can do three, as you can see, but that it just starts creating like points a little bit more. So delete that off. And then I, you also do a lot of like edge loop selecting. So technically this is like one big loop. So if I double click, I get the whole loop. And now I can just move that a little easier into there. And then another thing I, I do a lot too is if I hold Alt, it actually extrudes Alt or Control. Use this one. Yeah, if I hold Alt, it actually extrudes another one out. So I'll show it again. Can you change the color a little bit? It's a little hard to see the oh, yeah. divisions that we lighter. Yeah, I'll just leave it like yeah. that. Um, so I'm going to extrude this edge because this is one to add another row of faces. So if I hold Alt, pull this out, I get another edge. So now this is a whole new set of faces. So I can scale that. Make that a little bit better. So the more of these lines, and these are ter traditionally called like ISO lines. So like just as like just as like when you sketch something, you know, you you have like a flat surface or something, you draw a line down the center to help like explain what the shape of that is. Essentially, it's 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 essentially the same. So you're kind of just sculpting these these ISO lines. So from the front view, the helmet makes more of this like twist inwards. So try and rotate that inwards. And now this front edge is a little wavy. I mean, hide the head for now just so it makes it a little easier to see without the yeah. Yeah, 
So you kind of have to like add detail and take away detail as you go. So each one of those gumball tools that Ben is using, like they have different functions. For example, they, that one is, is the translation, and then he can use the scale one to kind of uh, bring the, the things closer or further apart, or the rotate one to kind of move them around. It's something that SolidWorks is moving towards, but they're still kind of playing around with the gumball. Rhino is a big, uh, especially Rhino version 5 is moved to this, which is the way that most free software is moving to. So yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna increase the back because that looks kind of cool. Like that edge back there looks a little more arrow. And then let's add a little bit of that. Make it a little bit underswept here, a little bit. That's kind of bad. And then this is obviously needs to kind of come in a bit more on the temple. So yeah, you can just kind of like just push and pull and massage things into place. And what I tend to do is just keep doing iterations, like saving them and then keep working. Cause it's not like, it's not like SolidWorks, they save like a history tree of everything. You kind of have to be careful of that. So if I like a version, I'll save it and start a new one. Side by side kind of thing. So that's a pretty okay base form. It needs to come down around the head more. And I'm like loosely referencing this helmet. So I guess we could start adding some more like stylistic elements to it. Gotta sculpt this a little bit more in into like that. That's the thing about the, the, what you see uh, Ben do is that this is it's, it's pretty fluid how Ben sculpt this thing. Whereas if you try to do this in SolidWorks, it will take you hours to try to get things just in the right spline and then extruding it. So that's the big advantage of these ones is that you can very, very organically change your model, like you know, to, to, to experiment. So it's a good it's a good experimenting tool to get the basic shape right. And then eventually you can move to, uh, you, you can still keep using more of the tools to refine it and to, and to uh, make those edges actually exactly where you want it to be. But yeah. like Ben says, it's like iteration wise, you can do lots of different shapes in a matter of minutes. So that's the big uh, selling point of uh, these months. Yeah, it's kind of like a form finding tool and uh, you can still save this and bring it into, into like SolidWorks and like do it like a little bit more parametrically if you so wanted to. So that's a pretty good base form. So like now that I've got this like general shape, I can start like punching holes in it and doing like a little bit more like like sculptural things. So I guess what I could do is I could do like one big line down the center. So one command I'll do is like add add an ISO line. So I'm going to pull one right through here, if you guys can see that. So what I do is I... Sorry, Ben, I'm going to have to pause you for one second. Sure. Make sure that it's still in there. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to pull, I'm going to add another ISO line here. So this ISO, this is one ISO line. I'm just going to kind of duplicate it. So if I'm ever going to add detail, like, like intakes and holes and stuff like that, you generally have to add a lot more ISO lines to kind of control those surfaces to, to allow them to kind of roll a little bit more sharply. So there, it's one more line. Kind of created this bump. So I'm gonna just push it up a bit. And then what I can try and do, so this is my poly model. So this is like the, the constant polygon that's underneath all of this all the time. Yeah, so what this one does is that it gives you these kind of like simplified view, which is easier to model because rendering the full curvature is very very taxing on your graphics card. So that's kind of like a, you can switch back and forth and it, it lets you, uh, depending on how complex it is, but that's the, 
It also lets you see how the curves are, where the points are. It also helps you fix things. Sometimes there's there's errors in your surface that'll occur that you can't really that look fine in the smooth mode because it, it smooths everything. But then you go into poly mode and you're like, oh, this is this is a little whack. This is a little, this is not quite right. So so I'm going to use a command called the extrude. It's not the typical extrude, but it'll extrude. Uh, let's say these these two surfaces inwards. So it adds kind of all these flanking surfaces around it that are, um, I'm going to try and blend out a little bit more. So yeah, it just it kind of moved those surfaces in and added a whole bunch of surfaces around it to kind of allow for that to happen. So. Fairly boxy still. Let's see if I can't do like a little washout or something. See, it's getting a little, little taut, a little too contorted. Try extruding in just the top one for a little bit. So you missed that uh, what Ben just said. He just on the the whole just stops. So he he's back to his original. One. Yeah, I just ended that because it's getting a little weird. So I'll do that. And then I'll take that out. Let's get a little crazy. I'm going to use the weld command to weld these two points together. It's a pretty handy one. I'm holding the alt button down to extrude those faces out that I intend to weld into this these two corners. That, that, boom. Trying to like kind of patch this together a little bit so this the smoothness can kind of kick back in because I kind of lost it once I uh, punched that hole in it. it. Can't really solve itself smooth, so it it tries its best, but it's not quite there yet. So I'm gonna build the face from here. So it's getting really poochy, so I'm going to try and add another ISO ring in here to kind of like take the stress out of it again just by going like, um, it's, like a, it's like the same loop that you're seeing here. Actually, that fin there is kind of neat. So, let's see if I can't pull this hole a little deeper. I'll keep that. But you really get lost in peace spines. Is 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 a. Uh... When, when you start modeling, it's the rule of fours. So uh, that's what Ben's talking about. Like, uh, you want you don't want to have triangle connections because that's where it loses it. Everything has to be like in four corners. So 
So kind of figuring out how to make a four-sided face of the call, that's the pretty part. Ideally, yeah. And uh, you want to avoid, like you will solve it, but then it'll, it'll start to pinch the geometry if you do three-sided corners. So again, I'm doing these extrudes, so I want to I want to bring this surface in through here along the side of the helmet. So I'll take my edge select, my edge select, get these two faces, holding the Alt key down, which tells it it wants to extrude instead of just straight move it. So I pull it, and it's extruding this face right from it in that direction. And I don't really care that it's like not there yet, because I can just massage it back into sort of the position I want to get it ready for welding, because I'm going to weld these two points. I go weld this point to this point, and now it's welded. So I'm trying to like close this gap a little bit, but I wanted that like intake to kind of branch, branch through a little bit. And actually, I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm going to pull this down. down here so that intake is nice and broad getting those kind of like souping fins looking thing I've always found that helmet project should be much more like sketch based what do you mean? the the helmet project yeah helmets are so such like a styling thing This is coming around. Uh, I'll we'll figure out how to close this back edge though. That's a bit tricky. Uh, a lot of a lot of things coming together that are going to make this hard. So a lot of times you have to rebuild things quite a bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna merge these two. These two branches, these two like flanking surfaces, are gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna blend them into each other a little bit, or try to at least. So I'll get these two faces again, holding out, just extrude them towards each other. I'll weld these two edges kind of together. So point weld him to there. Now they're welded. Now I could probably point weld these two guys. Uh, I'll try that again. There. There, over there. Yep. I'll do it this way. So now, it's, if that, those are really th things you don't want to you want to avoid, it makes it red because that's like a zero, infinitely zero location. So should avoid those. They won't solve. So if I grab these two, weld. Shit. In there, weld. In there, weld. Symmetry is coming through there a little bit. This is going to be impossible though, so I'm actually going to just take this out, weld those two, and see what happens. Oh. So this face here, it's like a five-sided guy. It's pretty bad. So, and you can see it's 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 solving it, but it's rendering it with like these broken edges, with these like uh, facets kind of to it. So, I'm just gonna add a line down the center of it to just divide it in two, and now that's better. But now this guy has the same problem, so I'll just do the same. So, uh, yeah. trying to always like keep things continuous. So if you ever have lines, it's always good to have them continue for long distances. So let's see if this solves. Oh yeah, tried. It's kind of neat. Uh, kind of spacey. Kind of like how this is not connected. It's just kind of floating. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, have, have we tried the? Uh, have we tried doing this with booleans? Uh? Booleans? Yeah. What do you mean? Like uh, making a shell and then ex doing that extraction of uh, doing another shell and then subtract. Oh, like thickening, thickening geometry? Well, like uh, you, you create one volume and then you subtract the other volume from it. For what? Like, what when would I use that? 
Like, what uh, do you... Oh, it's just another one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, it, that would be... Out, I think that would be outside of T-Splines. Because um, T-Splines doesn't really have any boolean. You'd probably have to just do that inside of, uh, like, regular Rhino commands. Right. After you jump. Because T-Splines can jump between, like, NURBS modeling, which is, which is Rhino's own surface modeling. Yeah. And then... The T splines is great because it, it jumps between the two really well. You can constantly go from nerves to T splines and T splines to nerves. So you'd have to jump to nerves and then boolean. I, th I think. I kind of like that 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 like yoke shape that's kind of occurring. It's still keeping my kind of like side edge that was there. If I'd sketched that, it's still persistent. But this is kind of just a new shape that's kind of been kind of cool. This is kind of a little muddled. So I will cut, try to straighten this. I use the scale. So if I pull the scale, it scales it down to zero. So it's actually like lining them up fairly quickly. And then I can rotate it back to the position to give it that. And it's, nothing's really perfect. So just pull these. <coughs> This area is a little bit tight. It needs more like lobe on the front, I think. Too. So what I'll do is I'll try and like flank the surface in a little bit more, so it's not quite so vertical. Just kind of gives it a little bit more undercut to it. So the light kind of catches it a little nicer, I'd think. So I'll just grab these guys. Push them in. Grab these two. Push them in. Now I'm getting this kind of edge that's forming, which I kind of like too. So it's a lot about like the problem with T splines too is it gets really, really poochy really quick, like really soft. So like things can be too soft almost, too smooth. So it's good to add in like some lines. So I use like the crease. So crease will allow you to pick up. Like if I want to make this line hard, maybe not that far. Uh, make this line hard. I can pick up the crease and just sharpen it. That's a little much, so I'll, I'll let it wash out a little earlier. So if I pick up the crease, put it there. Oh, it's trying, but not working out so great. Let's try from there. Not as much as I would have hoped for. So what I'll do is I'll add another loop. So this loop here, straighten them up, move them around. You can grab that whole loop and just duplicate it. So insert edge, and then allows you to just add another one of these exact loops here or there. So I'll put one there. Move these around to kind of accommodate it. And then see if this crease can run a little farther. So I'll remove it. Now it's smooth. Now I'll run this crease up to here. Yeah, it's a little better. So by adding that extra loop in, it, it, it kind of stopped that what these surfaces at the back were doing a little bit earlier, so it allows that to kind of fade out. So if I uh, render it a little bit, take the ISO lines off, Shaded? Yeah. You kind of see now I get that kind of wash out where that edge is hard. It kind of fades out over through here. And so let's try and resolve this area because getting some weird like spidery effect here where all these it's just not great. It's awkward and it's creating some like really sharp geometry here. So I'll uh, start by just like opening it up a little bit. And then again, I'll probably add in another ISO line to kind of handle this. Oh, and there's also a three sided guy here, which is probably causing problems. So, what I'll do, I want to, so now I want to get rid of the three sided, so I'm going to pull this ISO line that's coming in through here. I don't want it to go to here. I actually want it to dip down, come across the front of the helmet, and merge with uh, symmetry. So, I'll try and just delete it first, and now add 
edge, and then I can pick Point, 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 point. See how that handles? That's a little better. So that kind of relieves relieves this surface now that it's a quad. So I can uh, do some more like tuning in, in around that area. And so like I'm constantly pushing and pulling these these this like framework that's around it to kind of shape it. Ooh, what I really don't like how it just like ends abruptly. Most helmets have like an undertow there. So I'll just, what I'll do is I'll pull these back. Maybe just for the in the interest of time and then so that we don't run out of time. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, can you pull it back into Rhino and show some how, how we like, take this into um, just uh, use the Rhino tools to keep editing? Uh, or is it too early? To keep editing? Uh, like to, like, different like, things? Well, how, how would you finish up this? Is, is, will you finish everything in uh, piece lines? Um, well, I do all the ex exterior geometry in T splines, and then uh, to, like, add all the head elements, yeah, you'd probably, like, I guess all, like, the plastic elements inside the helmet, you could probably do that in just. Uh, yeah, inside of Rhino or inside of SolidWorks by, like, how, take... How would you take this into SolidWorks, let's say? That's the, that's the question. Um, I can show you how to bring it into SolidWorks. Yeah, so um, maybe, maybe just do a quick example, because, uh, just so that... Sure, just it's show. pretty just easy. Just it's just, uh, I'll boot it up first, just because that takes some time. Um, but what it'll do is, it's really simple. There's just one button to go from NURBS to T-Spines and back and forth. So I'll just convert to NURBS, and then it'll turn this into a kind of a dumber NURB surface that I can't manipulate with, with such ease. So if I take it and then convert. Oh, no, that's the other way around. There we go. Boom, now that's NURBS. Right. Now I lose all my functionality, and it's propagated a little differently, and it's kind of puzzled these surfaces a little differently too. So, so that's a big key thing about uh, going from these ones to Rhino to SolidWorks, is that the surfaces, the way that they interpret the surfaces is different for each of the software packages. So what looks very smooth in one of them may translate differently in another one, which may affect how it, the final one looks like. Although it, it, it does a very good job of translating, I guess. Yeah, in terms of like class of surface, uh, T-Splines, I think, runs at like constantly. It runs at like C2 or whatever continuous is. Or maybe, no, I think this runs a tangency all the time. But, uh, yeah, I think for, like, for rendering it should be okay. So then what I'll do, simple as, save as, step, desktop. Just save it here. What Ben's talking about, about the C1 and C2 is the number of intersections. So C1 surfaces have like a very abrupt transition. This is really made of three surfaces. This is one, two, and three. Although it's classified as C1 because each one is a separate one. C2 is when you have, this is one single continuous surface that joins with the second surface. It's called the C2. This is one entire single surface, which is the C3. Uh, so it means that if, I mean, we have this back to this. What makes more sense is up to the graph. I can't remember which one it goes. But essentially, it means that these plants are kind of in this realm where it's one continuous surface, unless you add uh, some sort of tangency transition. Um, SolidWorks is more like into this kind of like uh, edge, edge, like really sharp edges connecting to each other, and then you add the radius or something to smooth it out. But, but that's what parametric geometry is. 
Yeah, I think for most people's purposes, though, like, you never really need, like, I, I rarely work in curvature continuous. Like, yeah. visually, like, tangency is generally fine for most of the parts you do. It makes a, it makes a difference only for, uh, if you do an animation, it's a big deal yeah. in animation because if you get a crease on the, on the lighted object, you get, like, a, if you get skin and it has a crease, you see a defect right away. It also has to do with, in other modules, they use a lot because they want to have a smooth transition from one surface to the other. They want to have all C3 connections. They don't want to have little spikes like that that make the break the surface. Um, but Apple, Apple is very interested in your surface quality, and that's what they don't want to see. They don't want to see those sort of transitions between one and the other because if you have a flat surface, it'll break it up, and you, you'll see a little twist. Oh, so I brought two of my helmets in and overlapped them. Wanted before, wanted after. Should have figured out a way to avoid that. And it split them all. You don't have to do much. Then you just have to show how how it looks like that. Yeah, so it's in it's in SolidWorks now. Um, probably the best workflow would be to uh, quickly do a SolidWorks start part with a lot of your hard geometry that you know is going to exist, that you can like build in SolidWorks with like extrudes and, and revolts and the basic commands. And if you plan on using T-splines, it's better, yeah, it's better to make a start part of all like, like the engineering features and all the, the parts you know, bring that into T-splines, sculpt around it, and then bring that back. That'd be one way to do it. Because then, because it's kind of weird, it's kind of weird to do it the reverse way. When you do the surfacing first, and then you have to like jam in a bunch of parts, so it'd be better to like you know if you build like your head like fixture and all that stuff, and then bring it into T spines, so you can kind of sculpt around all those those hard points, and then you can bring it back, and it's a little easier to work with because it's got some more meaning behind it, right? Yeah, and that's how they like the first video that I showed you with the toothbrush. That's how they do it. All the all the mechanics are figured out, and then they build this body around it by using like pulling and pushing the mesh. You don't, you don't have to work on this, uh, and I just want to show how from uh, Yeah, yeah, it's fairly easy. Like, going between the two is fine. You just save as, like, a step file or something like that of that nature, and it should go between the two as long as it's in, uh, as long as it's back to NURBS. I don't think it'll take T-splines geometry. Like, if you just try to save it as T-splines, I've done that before, and you, you don't convert it to, like, a rhino surface, it just doesn't, it's just not there. It doesn't, it doesn't see it as anything. So yeah, that's kind of the most of it. Is there anything else? No, I, I think that, is it, is it, do you have so many questions about this? Yeah. How do you like thickness? Like thicken? You could just, you could you can thicken it in T-splines for one. Uh, like if I picked that, I think there's a thicken command. Yeah. Yeah. That'll attempt to thicken it. Uh, One of the issues with thickening is that, like, it'll, it'll intersect at funny ways. If you are not careful, it kind of like will self intersect. So well, this actually thickened okay. So yeah. what what it what it does when it thickens is it, is it caps the ends, yeah. and when it caps the ends, I'll show it to you in poly model. So like, when it caps the ends, I'll just actually undo this and do it in poly. So here's a poly model from the thicken. Thicken, please. Yeah, and then. You can see it's like previewing it inwards. So I'll preview. I'll just drop it somewhere, and it creates all these side surfaces. So what I would probably do to avoid that like rounding lip on the edge, uh, which kind of like stresses things too much, you can just like grab it, grab that edge, I delete that. So now it's kind of created that shell look, and then you could probably go in and just do like a flat surface there to create like the traditional tr thickened look, right? So if I grab these two, like the edges that were, I guess, normal to the thicken. Like this loop here. I don't like that, so I'll take that out. It's truer to the original design. I got two walls in there now that have been thickened. And I can go in and, and work with that. So would you do that in Rhino or can you do it here? 
I guess you have to. I could have done it in here. I could have told it to crease itself. So if I grab, yeah, if okay. I grab this loop, okay. crease it. Grab this loop. Crease it. Now I have that exact same stuff. Grab that. Crease it. Grab that. Crease it. Now you have your standard thickened look. And you could probably solid this. Probably uh, I convert this back to I convert this back to nerves. I don't know if it's a solidify. There might be a, so that's that that would probably work a little bit better inside of SolidWorks, maybe. Yeah. So one of the things that like uh, for this to be useful in SolidWorks more because like uh, when you close it completely. Um, you have what's called a watertight model. Watertight model means that it's not open edges, it's a little hole. If you have a watertight model, when you bring it into SolidWorks, it brings it as a solid. And the difference between a solid and a surface is that as a solid, you can do all sorts of things. You can punch holes, you can uh, cut it, you can do things, and then the inside of it will change to look like that, you know, something inside. If you cut a surface, you get an empty shell inside, which is a lot more difficult to work with in SolidWorks. Uh, well, it depends what you're doing, but by by shelling it, like uh, like Ben was showing, your when you bring it to SolidWorks, then you can start kind of like you have a solid object you can work with. But the trick is the shelling part, because there's little holes, hidden holes that you may not see, and if it's a tiny little hole that you miss when you bring it to SolidWorks, it just say you know, it just won't work. Like, you have to go hunt down like why. Or you saw that like it brought it in as a million different surfaces. Yeah, and like, that's it. And that's what it about too. It's like if you run, run, run unify as a single object, then you get these the tree of SolidWorks. You just copy it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could probably like you could just do like what I the way I work is I work if I'm working in Rhino, I work fairly laterally. So I'd make a model that I like, stop, copy it out start another one so you have this kind of history of your model it's good to show process like cat process of like this is the the, the process i went through because then like at the end of the day you can go back and essentially render them all side by side and it shows a clear progression of your sculpting and then yeah can you save this uh file and then uh, i'll just distribute it for people who wanna sure cool is there anything else any other questions for ben I just said the tab key. It's a tab key, and it's that little key. It's like a. It's this guy. Yeah, this guy over there. The tab key is way easier though, because this time you have. If I hit the toggle, yeah. you have to pick your guy, accept, and toggle back. So if you just hit the tab, it just jumps them between. So click that, toggle, enter. You just have to enable hotkey. So there's a there's a hotkey here thing. When you start up T splines, this is your T splines bar. It's always off. So you turn that off, and now the tab works. Same with a bunch of other hotkeys. Like L will get loop. So if you click, uh, yeah, and you run it, you can set the click L, the to you get loop, or you just double click the loop. It's all yeah. Okay, yeah, I can I can save her for you. Let's uh, stop the recording.